Every once in a while, here lately, I've been getting some questions. I figured we'd talk about it a little bit throughout the day today, not all in one big whammy. Becoming an owner-operator, owning your own truck. Remember. Hi there, how are you beautiful and wonderful people on this awesome day? We got Tater Tot's car all uh, filled up with fuel before we start our week. She's got some running to do this week. We are heading out for the exact same place we went last week. We're heading for Greenfield, Indiana. And then we're going to go back over to Indianapolis and run back up to Cherokee. The exact same thing we did the last time me and you spoke. The way it sounds, Warden wants to run over to Onawa real quick. And... Uh, eat at Franny's Cafe to eat some breakfast before we leave town here. So I think that's what we're going to do. The truck is ready to go. I just started her up, so it's going to be a couple hours before we're going to roll anyway. So that gives us time to run over to Onawa, come back, and then the truck has been running maybe two, three hours, so she'll be ready to roll. I love you, Tater. Stop it. I love you. Hi, yo. Come on, Cincinnati. You can pull this one off. No, Ram. I'm not going to have a coast team win. Never. I will have a coast team win. I will never root for a team from a coast. Nope. Nope. I will never root for a team on a coast. I'm not going to win because the beat. No. You kind of shaggy there, Shaggy. I think I'm going to stop calling you a little bud and start calling you Shaggy. No. He's not ready to get a cut. I'm not telling him to cut it. I like it. I'm going to say I like it. I say let it grow. Can you do a ponytail yet? You can't? Oh. We could put it in a man bun. No. I don't want a man bun. I think you could do a ponytail back there. You're getting closer. I don't want to do a ponytail. Right here, guys. This is why the United States is not in a budget crisis average ticket price there's people going there Troy says this road's boring let me give you some history on this road Troy see this house on to the right wait for it this house right up here on our right hand side well let's see if there is one still nope it's gone there used to be a house there down in those woods where grandma and grandpa met I think so if I remember right grandma and grandpa were riding horses and grandma fell off her horse oh, yeah. and hurt her butt and dad was there to tell her that her butt was dirty yeah I've heard that yep so there's some history and there's some more history on this road too I'll tell you once we get up here and then right here Troy mm -hmm. this whole thing right here used to be trees, to be trees. that used to all be timberland a big creek that ran down through there. It was just trees and tenure. It was just awesome over there for hunting and everything. Yeah. It's the same thing over here. This was full of trees up here too. No, it's farmland. No, it's farmland. I guess that's just the way we roll. But up here around the corner, when Grandpa was uh, Paige's age, he was reaching for an eight track tape and he went in the ditch with his car not right here around this next corner right here I'll show you the other road like right here right there is where grandpa went in the ditch when he was reaching for an eight track tape you and the old hens go here all the time huh yeah, we've gone here twice and a lot. okay well we're check it out I ain't ever been here I think the plate's too small for my hot beef you should ask for another plate. Yeah. Take those onions off. That'd be a pretty good sandwich. I'm going to record you eating. Will we try it? Can you do it? Ah, almost, man. Almost. <laughs> he used to be able to do that every time.
before we started trucking with me, he, boy, he could jump straight in. I just got the steps just for little helpers. Not anymore. Not anymore at all. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to go trucking. My tummy is full. I am ready for a nap. He's going to take a nap. Yeah, he's panting. Troy just got done doing a little workout with him. He was running, playing ball and everything. As for me, I'm going to take a nap after I get some trucking in. We got just shade over 700 miles to do today. So I'll get a nap here in about 700 miles. Does that sound okay? Yeah, whatever. We'll make it work. Yeah. All righty. Let's start off with our weather today. Our weather today, we're running probably about a 15, 20 mile an hour wind out of the south. So it's going to be kind of breezy for a little bit. I really don't know what's wrong with this thing. It's like it just gets caught up. I don't like you right now. There. There. Are you happy now? Okay. 15, 20 mile an hour wind out of the south. We're pushing 11 degrees. Come on, Oak. So it should be cold out, right? I'm kind of getting used to it. At this point, you just kind of keep going with it. We're not going to get the snow, so you just put up with the cold. That's just kind of the way it, this winter is going. Works for me, I guess. We're past the point to where I wanted snow, or even the kids wanted snow. It's time to move on. We're not going to get it. We're not going to pressure for it. And if we get it, we get it. If we don't, we don't. thought you had to go to the bathroom really bad. You even came up front and told me you had to. Well, the grass is right over there. What's this? What do you got in your hair? What is this? Hold still. What was that? We're actually pulling a little bit of an older trailer out. Not that old, but older than our other ones. I mean, this is the one that shook real bad on us a while back. So I'm really hoping they got that shake taken care of. Can we fit? Should we try it? All right, let's try it. Well, it looks like we got all trailer tires on it versus uh, um, drive tires on it, so the shake should be taken care of. But we're heavy. How heavy are we? I don't know. But when I backed into it, hooked onto it, you could feel she was a stout load. So she's not our normal load going out. Did you go potty or you just been following me this whole time? Was one day off good enough for you to get out of the truck? Pretty quiet today, aren't you?
We're not heavy. We are running uh, right at 41,862 pounds worth of ribs in the trailer. So it's better than them trying to fit 45,000 into a reefer, right? Alrighty, every once in a while, here lately I've been getting some questions. I figured we'd talk about it a little bit throughout the day today, not all in one big whammy. Becoming an owner-operator, owning your own truck. Remember that place right there, because uh, I'll talk about them a little bit later on. Owning your own truck, that is a, uh, a huge step in a trucking career. No, not really. Um, starting your own trucking business is actually rather pretty easy keeping it going not too hard a little bit more stressful than being, being a lot more stressful than being an own uh, company driver but is it worth it in the end oh yeah yeah it is I think so right now everything's running real smooth with the truck so of course it is when things are running real crappy um, am I missing being a company driver no because when things are running crappy you gotta get into someone else's truck and run it the whole time your truck's getting worked on versus just taking a vacation so let's go ahead get some miles between us and then we're going to chitter chat just a little bit about becoming an owner operator because starting your own trucking business is actually rather easy you can make it easy or you can make it hard i choose to make it easy Yeah, we're not even 100 miles into our day yet, guys. <laughs> um, I had a couple glasses of lemonade while me and Sarah and Troy went out to eat. That usually ends up, two glasses of lemonade is a lot of pee. That's all there is to it. I'm going to try to run through this stuff real quick. That way I don't bore too much of you. Too, that way I just don't bore you. All right, those numbers right there. Those are your DOT numbers, your authority, your, uh, that's you. That's you right there. So, what I forgot to tell you guys earlier is there's an easy way, a hard way, and then there's an easy, easy way of becoming an owner-operator. Um, the hard way is starting to do it all yourself. 
um, getting a hold of your DOT or your uh, Department of Transportation, getting a hold of them, doing all the paperwork stuff yourself, the computer work stuff yourself, doing all of that. And then uh, there's the easy way you can get a hold of, like I go through the Iowa Better Trucking Bureau there in Sioux City, Iowa. That's who I go through. I called them up and said, hey, I want to become an owner operator. What's the paperwork side of it that I need to take care of? And boo, they helped me through most of it. And then there's the easy way where you can become a lease operator. Now a lease operator is, um, well, there. Um, that says, that's the company that owns the trailer I'm pulling. But that's my company right there. A lease operator, you're gonna see the company name on the trailer and you're gonna see the company name on the truck and you're gonna see the company license plate on the truck. Basically, you own the truck, but they own everything else. You can't go jump around and do a bunch of different weird things with your truck because you're running under their authority, their DOT number. Everything is theirs except for the truck, and a lot of people do that, and I've heard that is just a phenomenal way to go. Um, when I decided to become an owner-operator, that was not a choice. Now remember, everything I'm going to tell you about owner-operator numbers is probably from... 10, over 10 years ago so the numbers might be just a tad off nowadays I couldn't go the lease operator route what are they is that what they call that the lease operator route when you're leased on to another company I couldn't go that part out. when I decided to become an owner operator my only choice was I had to do it this way where I own the truck I pay the truck and turn I pay for everything that has to do with the truck and then on top of that, I pay $200,000, $250,000 worth of cargo insurance for that trailer and everything that's involved in that trailer. Because um, when I got mine, I, uh, I wasn't pulling just one trailer. I, uh, I pulled multiple trailers. I pulled a feed trailer for part of the year. I pulled a refrigerated trailer. Then I'd pull a dry box trailer. That's three different companies. So being a, a lease operator to where... The company name on the trailer matches the truck. It wasn't an option for me. Back then, I could be way off with this, guys. Um, I think my, to get your own authority was under a thousand bucks. And once you get it, it's yours. Um, then you moved on to, you need to get your heavy use tax. That's just, I think that's 550 bucks a year. Uh, then from there, you need to get registered with your fuel tax association that's that IFTA you guys have heard me talk about the International Fuel Tax Association that's by that is where you spend you have to pay taxes in each state you travel in so you hear a lot of guys say um, when I cross the state line I have to take my notebook out I have to write down the miles and what state I get out of that state the new state I have to write down the miles and I have to uh, keep track of the miles I'm in the next state so at the end of the quarter, a quarter is three months, you'd figure up all those miles in each state, you'd write it down, you'd tally it up with your fuel, and then you'd have to decide, you'd have to see how much you owe each state for fuel tax. Now if you get enough fuel in that state, they might owe you some money for fuel tax, because that means you spent too much in tax money on their, in, in their state. Uh, I don't fill out a notebook anymore. I put a tracker in my truck. Now don't freak out, it's not an ELD. Um, it's a tracker. It tracks each mile I put on in each state. And in order for the DOT or the uh, cops or anyone to get a hold of the tracking records on that truck, well, it's easier to get your cell phone records. And we all know the cell phones are tracking you. So they're not even going to worry about it. They don't even know it's there, and I don't have to tell them it's under the dash. But I spend 15 bucks a month to use that through the Bureau. And it makes it to where all I have to do is hand them in my receipts and they're fill, they're fill them all out and do all the paperwork side of the international fuel tax. They charge me $40 a month to do that and to keep track of all my other permits I need too. In all, I give them $55 a month and it's probably the best $55 a month. I tried doing it myself and it just, it ain't worth the headache. It really isn't um, to some people it's a lot easier I'm borderline dyslexic so numbers get all mixed up in my head a lot man did you guys luck out on that one my camera battery went from 50% to 30%
to 15% to dead all within two minutes. So that stopped me from talking. We're gonna let the battery charge up a little bit, get some more miles in, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about probably one of the most controversial parts of uh, becoming an owner operator and that advice everybody gives you on becoming an owner operator. And that is money and your truck. Because I know I did everything wrong in the wise of how much money I had when I started and what truck I had when I started. I think we're in Mitchellville. I think we're in Mitchellville, Iowa right now. It's just east of Des Moines, Iowa um, on Interstate 80. Yeah, we took a different route heading out to Indianapolis. I don't know why I took this route. Not a big fan of Interstate 80, especially across Iowa. But either which way, this is where we're at right now. Temps have dropped. We're down to two degrees now. Uh, the wind is still here, but it's not blowing near as bad as it was earlier. Before I get into that controversial part I was telling you about 
I forgot to mention one thing earlier. Um, you need to find a good tax person too. I know a lot of farmers do their own taxes. Uh, I don't know many truck drivers that do their own taxes. Just for a simple fact, unlike farming, trucking changes every year. I guess farming does too, but trucking changes every year. So you better grass up there? Okay. So you really want to find someone that's on top of that. I go to Beginning Balance there in Sergeant Bluff, Iowa. No, the uh, Trucking Bureau or Beginning Balance are sponsors. I'm just saving myself on answering questions. When it comes to insurance though, or um, taxes, how much you're going to spend a year in taxes, that's kind of up to you. Your tax person is probably going to prefer you to buy an expensive truck then you can use it as a write-off for as long as you need to, or three years. I haven't done that for a year. I haven't done that since I started driving a truck. Um, in the guidelines to becoming a owner operator somewhere online I think I read this they prefer or they say your first truck and I'm gonna word it like them should cost no more than fifty five to sixty five thousand dollars I think they're trying to say don't go out and buy a big fancy truck right off the bat if I'm spending fifty five to sixty five thousand dollars on a truck that thing better be the best there ever is which there's not well, trucks cost two hundred thousand dollars now I don't think you can even buy a a decent truck for 150 grand brand new I I couldn't imagine I could not imagine spending over 40,000 40 gave 40, 40 grand for first class after everything was said and done forty five thousand dollars for first class my first truck ready was ten thousand dollars a price for a ticket at the Super Bowl this year, six thousand dollars. Add four grand onto that, and I bought my own truck. Now, if you're going to buy a ten thousand dollar truck, you better—I'm not a mechanic, never will be, don't want to be—but I could be shade tree if I want to be. So, if you're going to buy a ten thousand dollar truck, you better know how to turn a wrench a little bit. And the oh, hey, come here. What are you doing way up there? Get down here. <laughs> oh, Opie. But if you're going to buy a $10,000 truck, you better at least know a little bit around trucks because it's... You're going to have to work on it. That's all there is to it. And then in that same article I read, it said that a truck driver should have at least... $20,000 in a checking account before you start your own business as a truck driver, as an owner-operator. I had a grand. I bought a $10,000 truck and I had $1,000 in my account. Because guys, once you start, once you get that truck, and the 1000 bucks was after I paid for the licensing, after I paid for the authority, after I paid for the insurance, after I paid for the heavy use tax, um, the fuel association, you don't have to pay anything to get into that. There's one other tax I'm forgetting, and I can't, it's driving me nuts that I'm forgetting that you have to get. After I paid all that, I had a grand left. Yep. Oh my gosh, I was breaking all the rules. You need a challenge. You gotta have a challenge, and that was my challenge. So, um, within the first, let me think here, I started out hauling feed. And it was going to be four weeks before I got my next check. So I needed to make enough. I needed to have enough for. That was local. I did not go over the road for the first three months, maybe six months of driving. I did not go over the road. But I needed enough in fuel. Now, nowadays, a grand ain't going to get you anything in fuel. That's not even two tanks. You, you can't fill up twice for anything less than. Twelve hundred, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars now. Back then, a grand would get you a long way on fuel. It'd get you a little bit on fuel. So that's what I did. You're gonna have money within that first four weeks, so you just gotta make it four weeks. If anything goes wrong in that four weeks, or if you're gonna buy a ten thousand dollar truck and have a thousand dollars in your savings account, if anything goes wrong, you're gonna want to have at least two rolls of black tape or duct tape beside you, or gorilla tape, and at least couple rolls of baling wire because there's going to be days where 
you're band-aiding that truck to make it to your next check. There's going to be days where you, uh, um, well, you band-aid the truck to get it home. You know, uh, my main goal when I got my first truck was to make it six months. This truck just has to last me six months, then I'll buy another one. Then that truck was going to have to last me a year, then I was going to buy another one. Then the next one was going to have to last me a couple years, then I'd buy another one. Dad, you raised a hoarder. That's all there is to it. I can't get rid of my vehicles. I get one, I keep it forever. That's all there is to it. I bought that truck, I used it for five, six years. Uh-huh. Five, six years, I ran that 86 Freightliner up and down the road. That Freightliner went more places than my Kenworth. Um, that Freightliner has been to Florida. The Kenworth's never been to Florida. The Freightliner went down to Arizona. The Kenworth's never been to Arizona. It's been down to uh, the Mexico border. It's been everywhere and hot. That Freightliner was miserable hot in the summer, and it was miserable cold in the winter. And I wanted more luxuries. I wanted a bigger sleeper. I wanted uh, more power. Because when you buy your truck, your first truck, a lot of guys are going to tell you, you need to buy a truck that fits what you're going to use it for. Once again, I went against the odds there, you know. When I bought my truck, I was going to be grossing out at 90 to 95,000 pounds when I was hauling feed and only 80,000 when I was pulling the refrigerator. Let's get back in the truck. My hand is numb. I think today would have been a good day to put your boots on. Because your paws, I'm sure, I can't grab them or I'd freeze you out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure your paws are kind of chilly right now. Yeah, I bought a truck with a big Cam 4 Cummins in it. What's those things got? Maybe four and a quarter horsepower? I don't even think that. They might actually be under 400 because it wasn't turned up at all. Um, I did end up rebuilding the engine. And I didn't turn it up at all then either. But I bought that truck with that engine in it. And I ran around grossing out at uh, 90,000 to 95,000 pounds. You don't need a powerhouse. I have a 600 Caterpillar underneath the hood of the Kenworth here. And I, I never use all the power, but I love having it. But you will, uh, it, it don't matter how you drive. Um, would that 400 horsepower engine been too less too not enough power for that uh for those loads i was running if you wanted to run 80 mile an hour maybe i'm good with 60 55 60 i'm good no reason to run the heck out of it no reason at all so there's two things right off the bat with the truck i'm going to get some arguments on uh how much you should have in the account when you start trucking and i'm going to get some arguments on uh, what you should buy for a truck uh, me personally Anything over $45,000 for a truck is insanity. It's flat out insane. I couldn't imagine spending that much money for a truck. Yeah, it's my livelihood. Yeah, it's what I make money with. But, okay. But I couldn't imagine spending that much money. New. I can already I'm caught no you can't have me I can already read some comments though in the wise of um, are you uh, spending if you're if you're gonna own an old, older truck if you're gonna own a newer truck no matter which way you're either gonna have a truck payment or you're gonna have a maintenance payment it's trucking no you're wrong I know I said you were wrong um, a truck payment is guaranteed. You have to pay that every single month. And that's going to come between anywhere from $2,500 to $5,000 I've seen people pay. This thing, I could run it. You know, the last two months we've spent ten grand in, in uh, repairs. Tires, and then we had all that engine work done. I might go two, three months and not spend a dime on this truck. Most of the times, though, I save the not spending a dime on the truck for summer months. 
I won't spend any money on the truck during the summer just because this just because those, that's travel money the money I'm making then that's uh, for the family to travel for me and Sarah to travel on the motorcycle um, take chunks of the summer off stuff like that so it, it's nothing like that in the it's nothing to where you're going to if you have a new truck or an old truck no matter what you're gonna have payments no nope if you have a, a brand new truck you're working for the truck um, you have to make those payments there's no not making a payment or they're gonna come get the truck if you have an old truck that's paid off then the truck works for you you work your own schedule all the way up till three years ago I used to hustle man I used to I used to put some miles on every year and the truck was moving all the time and nowadays well you guys know me I run three four days three four nights a week out and sometimes five if we're gonna go out east but it's usually about three four nights a week out then I go home for a couple days come back out and then I will go run that way for a little bit then I'll take three four days off then get back in the truck and that's strategically that way sometimes like when I smacked my head and I was off for what two almost three months that that wasn't planned but usually I, I can plan somebody's reefer did not want to fire up but I can plan it out that way to where um, come tax time you're, I mean if you're gonna make three hundred thousand dollars plus a year you 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 want to be spending money on the truck all the time I mean that's just that's just simple knowledge right there and if you're not going to make that much a year I mean by the time I boil it all down your standard company driver probably makes what I make take home maybe I mean you a company driver either which way you look at it should be making over a hundred grand a year if you're if you're working if you're out four nights a week you should be making a hundred grand a year easy in the trucking world unfortunately in the trucking world it's not that way these mega fleets these mega fleets they run the fuel prices up and the and the, they run the rates down luckily the rates are up right now so they must be feeling pretty kind to us all right that tanks full we weren't that low on fuel I just wanted to top them off before we got into Illinois and uh, this will get us back up to Cherokee so we're good to go there Like I said, we weren't near E. We didn't even need fuel at all. I just didn't want to get fuel in Indiana or Illinois because it's well over four dollars. I can get it here for a heck of a lot cheaper. Oh, well, you're limping again, I see. I wonder what that's all about. Earlier, I thought it was just because you come out of the truck too hard and you sprang something. You're not limping at home, though, so I'm assuming it has something to do with the truck. In the wiser repairs, whew. If they lift the hood up, or you take your truck to a shop and they lift the hood up on your truck, it's easy a grand. Easy. You know, I went into the shop originally, you know, I gave uh, Eldon a $3,000 budget. I said I got three grand well three grand would have covered everything but before we took it in if you guys remember the uh, diesel fuel and the radiator remember I thought it was oil um, before that you know we would have spent three grand but since we added that in there we walked out of there spending five thousand one hundred and some dollars so and then last month I put new drive tires on it and that that was under five thousand but not far if I remember right I can't remember how much I spent was it four I don't know I can't even remember how much I spent for those eight drives you know then the week before I mean every month is gonna be something if you want it to be with an older truck uh, you know I have a lot that I need to do I need to rebuild the rear ends or I need to put new rear ends in it um, I got a lot of suspension I need to redo and then I need to start thinking about the big one you know I you know that cat in there she's over 700,000 miles on that cat now and almost 2 million miles on the truck 
Uh, I got a long time before I got to worry about rebuilding that cat. You can run a cat a million and a half miles, no problem. No problem at all, actually. So I got a while yet before I got to worry about rebuilding that engine. It all costs money. Everything you do in trucking costs money. And just the good part is, if you're going to own an older one, you get to choose how much it's going to cost you. You can run your business however you want to. You can do whatever you want to. When you own that truck, and I, guys, I don't know how it works if you don't own the authority. If you're running underneath someone else's authority, I'm pretty sure you own everything. You can still, yeah, yeah, I got a buddy of mine who does that. And he still runs exactly how he wants to run. He says whatever the truck does, whatever it doesn't do. He just has to turn all of his records, you know, log books and all that stuff into somebody else versus the only person that checks over my log books is me. If DOT pulls me over or audits me, they check it out. But I don't have to turn it into anybody else or any of that fun stuff. It sure hasn't warmed up much. It did warm up a little bit. We are up to uh, 10 degrees versus the 2 degrees I think it was the last time we spoke. We've made it out here to Greenfield, Indiana. Same thing as usual guys. We're just going to drop this loaded trailer off. We're going to pick up an empty trailer. We are going to go to the west side of Indianapolis and pick up, no, get loaded. We're not picking anything up. Get loaded. And then we're going to drag that load up to Cherokee, but that'll all be in tomorrow's video. Oh, that's going to require... The... It's going to be one of those mornings. Oh. Right hand. Ow! Okay, hold on. That was crazy. What was that all about? I missed my old fifth wheel. Ah, you're loud, go away. last thing on the whole truck driver thing being an owner operator um, I'm gonna get asked so I just will answer this my opinion wise when should I become an owner operator should I be a company driver first how long should I be a company driver or should I just jump straight into being an owner operator
purely my opinion if you work a desk job or you work somewhere that has nothing to do with trucking whatsoever then you should probably go be a company driver for a little bit just to get your feet wet you know what it's all about maybe for a couple years if you've been raised around trucking or you've been working in the trucking world for a while just not try driving a truck then I think you're good to go ahead and become an owner right off the bat like Troy my son if he wants to become a truck driver when he gets older or Paige who knows but if they want to become truck drivers when they get older they will never know what it's like to be a company driver I might buy a truck they might run for me maybe but most likely they're gonna go straight into owning a truck I, they will never get to experience the joys of being a company driver you doing okay back there because it is cold isn't it it is cold cold so that's about all I got for you guys there's a lot more we could probably talk for another hour or more about this whole conversation of becoming an owner operator um, I do feel that maybe no the, the way things are going right now and the wise of schooling for you guys as of the 6th of this month you have to go to school to get your CDL kind of screwy right yeah that's that kind of is just really weird to hear because someone like my son or someone is gonna have to go to school and schools used to be relatively affordable once this law went into effect I heard schools are going up to ten fifteen thousand dollars for a six-week class Whatever you do guys, don't sign any contracts without reading them because there's going to be a lot of mega fleets out there that are going to say, well they are they already do now, or put you through school if you send a contract with me for a while. With the prices of school going up and everything, I can only imagine how long they want these contracts to be. So take the contract home if you can. I don't know how that works, but if you can, take the contract home. If you can afford it, have a lawyer look over that kind of stuff because I'm hearing that they tell you to come to our school or come to our place to work sign a two three year contract and then you're free and we're pay for all your schooling you get to them and they found a way to weasel it into where you're only making like 25 cents a mile that won't work I'm done talking about it I hope you guys learned just a little bit about it just just a little bit I'm not a teacher I've told you guys that not a teacher but just a little bit about the world you guys stay safe as always I'll see you next time